All right, welcome back to another video on the After Hours channel. In this video, we're going to be answering the age old question of which REIT is better, Vici Properties or Realty Income Core. And because I am a Vici holder myself, as you can see right here, I have over 300 shares in this company. I am going to do my absolute best to put my bias aside and give you guys a fair and transparent view on both companies. To answer this question, we're going to be using a few different tools. One, we're going to be looking at Barron's. It's a subscription I have that we can break down some of the financials of companies and get a little bit more information. Not only that, but we're going to be taking a look at the investor presentations that both of these companies issued out to their investors. And of course, we're going to be using one of my favorite tools, Qualtrim to dive into the financials of each of these companies so that I can give you a well-rounded answer of which one I think is a better investment. All right, let's kick this thing off with first a portfolio update. Year to date, the portfolio is up 50%. And if we switch this to the one week view, you can see the market took a bit of a hit, mainly because of my Apple holding. We are down $1,300 or 1.4%. So for this video, we're going to be switching back and forth. If I'm taking a look at something on Vici, I'm probably just going to switch right over and take a look at Realty Income just so we don't miss anything. But before we invest in any company, we have to understand what they actually do. And for these two companies, what kind of leases make up the majority of their portfolios. For Vici, that would be something called a triple net lease. In simple terms, a triple net lease is a type of lease agreement where the tenant is responsible for not only paying rent, but also additional costs like property tax, insurance, and maintenance. So not only is Vici collecting their rents, but they're putting a lot of those extra expenses on their tenants, which from a shareholder's perspective, I really like. Switching over to Realty Income, what kind of leases do they have? Well, Realty income is one of the global leaders in fragmented net lease. In simple terms, it means different parts of the property are rented by different people or businesses instead of just one. So where you have Vici and one of their properties is specifically rented to a company like MGM, you have realty income where they could own multiple properties in one location and it's rented by multiple people. So now that we understand the different types of leases these companies have, let's jump into some of the financials. And again, one of the tools I'm gonna to be using for this is none other than Barron's. It's an investing subscription that I recently got to test out. So starting with Vici, the first thing I wanna take a look at is the analyst ratings. So out of 23 analysts, 17 say it is a buy, three say it's overweight, and three say it's a hold. Zero say it's underweight, and zero say it's a sell. So the conclusion is it is a buy. Let's take a look at the analyst rating for Realty Income. Out of 14 analysts, we got seven saying it's a buy and seven saying it is a hold. The consensus is it is a buy. For the next portion, we're gonna be taking a look at a tool called the Stock Grader. So as you can see, we are looking at Vici right now. So taking a look right here at the top real quick, we can see that the best income stocks, they have Vici rated at 41 out of 159. So that doesn't go into the investing thesis that much, but it clearly indicates that it's a stock that people buy into to get some income in return, which is of course that dividend. As for the fundamental rating they have on here, it is a 54, which is a hold out of 100. The sentiment rating, they have it at a 7.7. .7. And this is up from a neutral, which they had on December 29, 2023. Diving into that rating just a little bit more, we can see they have a little blurb here that we can take a look at. It says the company's fundamentals look average at best with significant room for improvement. So not the best sign if you're an investor. And don't worry, we'll compare that to Realty Income and what they have for them. But first, let's take a look at their gradings for the overall financials of Vici. When we take a look at the fundamental analysis for Vici, they have it broken down into a B, C, and D, similar to a grading score in most schools. So starting with the first one, let's take a look at the growth. They have it as a B, so not that bad. Moving over to the value section, they have it as an A minus. So again, not that bad in my opinion. And of course, you can see everything that goes into this grade. Heading down a bit further, let's look at the profitability section. They have it rated as a B. So slightly lower than the value, but again, not that bad when you're talking about a business that was created it in 2017. Slide this over even more, we look at the cash flows, which is extremely important, and they also have it as a B rating. 
So without taking a look at the financials myself, which we will get into on Qualtrim, this is pretty good in my opinion. There is no major red flags that I'm seeing just yet. And just for fun, we'll take a look at another graph that they have here, which pretty much indicates within the last five years of when they thought it was a buy, hold, or sell. So pretty self-explanatory if we're looking at it. Green means it's a buy, hold, yellow, and red, obviously a sell. Currently, it looks like they have it as a hold, which we mentioned earlier. And surprisingly enough, it looks like the only time that they had this as a buy was around that July 2021. Lastly, one thing I want to point out is the analyst rating and the price target. So out of 23 ratings, they have a price target as $35 per share. If we look just up here, we can see it's still trading under that at $31 per share. Moving on to realty income and the same thing, we'll take a look at the analyst rating real quick. It looks like out of 14 ratings, they have the price target at $61 per share. Taking a look at that same blurb that we did for Vici, it looks like it says, the company scores poorly in the market graders growth at reasonable price analysis. So it looks like they're really highlighting the growth aspect of this company and they don't think it's going to grow as fast and it hasn't been growing as fast. Moving down to the stock grader, we can see the fundamental rating they have right here. It is 30.5, so much lower than Vici. The sentiment rating, they have it at a 6.2, so again, it is under Vici. Let's see if the fundamental analysis is any better. So we'll take a look at the first one right here growth they have it as a b plus so not that bad good sign so far as for the value section they also have it as a b which is underperforming vici if you remember moving down we're going to take a look at the profitability they currently have it rated as a c so again underperforming vici and cash flows don't look necessarily that bad they have it as a b so it looks like the two sections that underperformed vici we had value and we had profit profitability. Same thing we did. We'll take a look at this chart just to see when they had it as a buy, hold, or sell. And it looks like in the past, since January of 2019, they have always had this as a sell. That's pretty surprising in my opinion. Next, I want to compare both companies investing presentations. Both of these are the most up-to-date investor presentations that these companies have put out. So we'll take a look at both and compare. First off, we'll start with VG. So starting with the investment highlights, this is typically the things that they put at the top of their list. This is what they want their investors to know first and foremost. And I'm going to tell you what I think is the most important things to take away from these highlights, starting with this one right here. Significant scale and stable cash flows. It goes on to say that Vici is the second largest triple net lease REIT. And more importantly, they have collected 100% of rent since the formation of the company. That is pretty huge in my opinion. And it's signifies that their contracts are pretty well written and not only that but their tenants work with Vici to make sure that they pay rent on time. Also it signifies that the companies that Vici rents to are stable well-run businesses that have cash flows coming in so that they can actually pay rent. The next portion I want to highlight without going into the jargon too much because it gets a little bit confusing and essentially I want to highlight this. Almost all of the money from renting out their properties, which is 96% they're saying for this, will keep going up with the cost of living rises over the years. So that they have baked into their contracts an escalation, which accounts for 96% of their rent roll, which will increase over time with the cost of living. So they don't have to wait till the end of their contract to renegotiate and raise it, but it's already baked in. So that's another good thing for shareholders. When you're taking a look at any REIT, one of the most important things to look at is the occupancy rate and if you can see right down there at the bottom of this their occupancy rate is 100%. That is a great indication of the businesses they rent to. And not only that, but the properties that they own. One other highlight I want to take a look at, and that is the tenant transparency. In simple terms, about 81% of the money earned from renting comes from companies that publicly report their financial performance. This gives a clear view on how well the companies are doing and how stable they are as tenants. Again, this is great for shareholders and Vici. Another highlight that sucks 
stuck out to me was the fact that they earned investment grade balance sheets. And lastly, one thing that was huge when I was an investor was the fact that they were added to the S&P 500 in June of 2022. Now, after taking a look at those highlights, let's jump into the investor presentation for Realty Income. Same thing, we're gonna be taking a look at the highlighted section, everything that they really want their investors to know instead of going through 40 pages worth of stuff and making this video multiple hours. Starting here at the top, we have a $56 billion enterprise evaluation for the company, almost $4 billion in annualized base rent, and they also have a credit rating by Moody's and S&P of a A3 and an A-. If we compare that to Vici real quick, they have a rating from Moody's of a BA1, which is stable, Standard & Poor's of a BBB-, and Fitch same thing, BBB minus, all of which are stable. So realty income, as far as credit rating goes, has a higher rating. Not only that, but they have 54 years of operating history, which is kind of crazy to think about. They have over 13,000 properties and just under 40% of their rent is investment grade clients. So again, that means that their tenants have a solid foundation as far as their business is concerned, which means realty income is less worried about that rent getting paid. One thing I found interesting was this right here, 91% of the total rent is resilient to economic downturns and or isolated from e-commerce pressures. So again, that's a good sign for shareholders out there. If there is a big recession coming up, like a lot of the news is pushing out right now, then that means their tenants should be able to continue paying rent rent in the future. As for growing their international presence, we can see that they are the seventh largest global REIT. They have 354 assets internationally and on average a 10-year lease term. And of course, one of the most important things when we're talking about realty income is, of course, their dividend track record. 29 consecutive years of raising their dividend. 640 monthly dividend payments declared, 104 quarterly increases, and they are also an S&P dividend aristocrat member. Now, it's not highlighted there, but I do want to switch over and take a look at their occupancy rate, which is 98.8. So just under that 100%, which Vici has. Now, what I'm sure you have all been waiting for, Let's take a look at their actual financials. We'll kick this off with Vici. Starting at the top, we can see it's currently trading at $31 per share. As for the valuation section, it is currently a $33 billion market cap with a PE of 13 and a forward PE of 11. As for the balance section, it looks like they are negative $16 billion. So Vici is in debt $16 billion. So again, I mention it all the time. These are both very levered businesses. So if that's not something you're comfortable with, you might want to take it into consideration when you're buying into these companies. And of course, these are both dividend payers. And it looks like the yield for Vici right now is 5.12. So we're definitely on the higher side, comparing it to nearly all of the companies in my portfolio. But let's take a look at the revenue real quick. It looks pretty healthy year after year going up with a huge spike in 2022. And that looks visually appealing and all. But let's take a look down here at the bottom. In the last two years, they've increased their revenue by 31% and in the last five years, increased it by over 23%. As for the EBITDA in the last two years, they've increased it by over 8%, and in the last five years, increased it by over 16%. So again, not that bad. Now taking a look at their free cash flow with stock-based compensation included, we can see in the last two years, they've increased their free cash flow by over 47%, and in the last five years, 31%. So massive, massive gains for their free cash flow. And I definitely like the fact that they're not paying out huge, huge stock bonuses, or quite frankly, a lot of stock to their employees in general. As for the free cash flow per share, in the last two years, it's up over 18%, and in the last five, 10%. Switching this over to the net income, it looks like in the last two years, they've raised it by nearly 5%, and in the last five years, raised it by over 16%. So again, looks pretty healthy in my opinion. As for the dividend, because Vici is a huge dividend payer, we can see that in the last year alone, they've raised their dividend by over 6%, and on average in the last five years, raised it by over 7%. Remember those numbers when we take a look at Realty Income. Now, one aspect of these businesses that I don't like is the fact that they continuously have to issue new shares. So in the last two years, they've increased their share count by 23% and in the last five years, increased it by 19%. When we're talking about REITs, this is pretty typical. So it's nothing out of the norm. 
And lastly, I want to take a look at the return on capital employed. So we can see in 2022, it was 4.6%. Year before that, 8.3%. So definitely on the lower end when comparing it to other companies out there. Now let's see how this stacks up against Realty Income, which is currently trading at $57 per share. Same thing, we'll kick it off with the valuation section. Market cap is slightly higher than Vici with $41 billion. PE is 43 with a Ford P of 44. So definitely on the higher side. As far as balance section, it looks like Realty Income is in more debt than Vici makes sense they've been around much longer which is 19 billion dollars so again if you didn't know that and you're thinking about investing in this company i would take note as far as the dividend goes realty incomes dividend is slightly higher than vici so they got that going for them 5.33 percent and again this is a monthly payer so they're going to be paying out a decent amount of money to you as for the revenue growth we can see that in the last 10 years they've increased it by over 15 percent and in the last two years with that huge spike increased it by over 26%. As far as EBITDA goes, we can see that in the last two years, they've increased it by over 25%. And in the last two years, similar to the revenue, increased it by over 15%. As far as the free cash flow goes with stock-based compensation included, in the last two years, they've increased it by 40%, mainly because of that huge spike in 2022 I'm talking about. And in the last two years, averaged out around that 17%. As for their net income in the last two years, it went up over 55% and the average for the last 10 years was over 13%. When we take a look at their dividend, I mean, this kind of looks insane. There's not many companies out here that have this much of a track record paying out their dividend. And not to mention that it is monthly. But when we take a look at the actual numbers down below, we can see that in the last year, they've only increased it by 3.22%. And on average in the last 10 years, only increased it by 3.8%. Let's compare that to Vici real quick. In the last year, Vici increased their dividend by 6.4%. So much higher than realty income and in the last five years because again this company has only been around since 2017 they've increased it by over seven percent so when we're comparing both dividends yes realty income pays a slightly higher monthly dividend but over time vici is actually raising their dividend much higher than realty income now this may be a deal breaker to you it may not but i figured i'd highlight it just so you guys can make an informed decision for yourself taking a look at realty incomes shares outstanding again you're going to see these companies diluting their share shareholders quite a bit. In the last two years, they've increased their share count by 21% and in the last 10 years by over 12%. As for the ratios and return on capital employed, we can see that year after year, it looks like it is consistently going down with 2022 only being 2.7%. This is much lower than Vici when we're comparing the two. And it looks like they've been having a steady decline since around that 2010 mark. So if I was a realty income investor, I would love to see them improve these metrics. Based on all of the metrics we looked at today, comparing everything and leaving my bias out of it i would still have to say that my preferred company is none other than vici now i may get some hate for this especially because i posted this poll on my community section yesterday and i simply asked vici versus realty income and it's a pretty close poll with Vici just taking the lead with 53%. And listen, from an investor standpoint, I see the value in both. Realty income is much larger with a ton more properties than Vici. But when we're comparing everything and we're taking a look at the financials, I do think Vici is a better investment for me right now. Could that change in the future? Absolutely. Am I telling you to sell out of realty income? No, I'm not. Like all of my investments and all the companies I cover, this is your choice as an investor. Do not buy into Vici just because I'm buying into it. And after looking at everything, I still think it is a better investment. Take the responsibility for yourself. Look some of this stuff up and compare the two because you could have caught something that I missed. And if that's the case, let me know down in the comment section below. So for this one, I just did the best I could as far as highlighting some of the key takeaways for both companies in case you didn't know yourself. And to end this video, I actually just posted this last night on my community section as well. And it's a pending dividend from Vici for $142. This had nothing to do with my decision today, but I figured I'd point it out because these both are huge dividend paying companies. And if you build up your positions in them, you can expect some large dividend payments coming in to you 
monthly or quarterly. So to wrap this video up, if you guys got any enjoyment out of the video and you learned something new, don't forget to like the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing. I also have a Patreon right now where I'm going to be posting exclusive content. You're going to have access to a whole investor community, which I'm trying to build up right now. So if you have any questions for me, you could simply just jump on Discord, DM me. Now, with that being said, I'm not going to tell you which companies to buy into. That is illegal and I'm not licensed to do so. But hopefully in the future with these videos coming out and some of the exclusives I'll be posting, you can become more knowledgeable as an investor and make those decisions for yourself. So if you stuck around to the end, I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.